There's a team in Spokane, Washington, that's coached by a really nice guy. His name's Mark Few, and he's created and developed a world-class grade A college basketball program at the University of Gonzaga. When I think of this university and I think about this basketball program, the steps they've taken forward in the last 20 years, you know what kind of cupcake I can I think about? A wonderful, tasty, moist, strawberry shortcake cupcake. And I love strawberry shortcake cupcakes. And I love Gonzaga. Okay, this is a team that has a scorching hot temperature. They almost ran the table last year going to the national championship and then getting blown out by Baylor. That is highly respectable. They were playing one of the best uh, man-to-man defensive teams in the nation. And I think that this year they got unfinished business. They got high expectations and they got plenty of reason to have these high expectations. They're well coached. They get the right recruits and they bring in the right transfers, which is very critical. This is an offense that we know and love as an up-tempo, unselfish transition freaks. They are the type of team that It's like, it's your turn to score. It's your turn to score. It's your turn to score. And that's the type of unselfish basketball you dream of seeing at multiple programs at the collegiate level. Yet, Coach Few has nurtured this and developed it, and we're going to take advantage of it betting-wise. All right? On defense, this is a team that definitely needs to have very good elite rim protection to be effective. Three-point denial and forcing their opponent into isolation situations is always the main goal for Gonzaga on defense, and I think that they're going to be able to execute that this year, even though they have a younger roster. I think that when you look at this team, this is what they do. They go over in the first half. There's the trend from last year. I think that we're going to be able to find some value once again like that. And even though they have a tougher non-conference this year, I do not think that there's going to be many games in the non-conference or in conference play for that matter, that they don't score 40 plus points in the first half. So first half team totals in that 37 to 43 and a half point range are what we're going to be looking for to attack. And let's be brutally honest. It's a team that is very good in the non-conference and in conference as a favorite, whether it be on at home or on the road. And let's remember when Gonzaga plays at the dog kennel, it is a hollering house. It is like the ladies of the nights going crazy on steroids, trying to rip you up. Okay. So let's just forget that, uh, that visual for a second. And let's talk about one of Gonzaga's key cogs when it comes to running that up-tempo offense, facilitating, playing that unselfish basketball. And it's one, it's the one and only Aurora, Ontario, Canada's Andrew Nemhard. Andrew Nemhard's a guy that I'm projecting this year to average 12 and a half points per game, 4.7 rebounds per game, and 5.4 assists per game, which should have him in the top 10 to 15 in the nation when it comes to assists. This is a guy that very he's very he, He's very savvy when it comes to scoring off those ball screens, taking those shots at those key times, and facilitating for his teammates to make sure that everybody's in the flow and rhythm of that up-tempo offense. He's a capable defender, and listen, he plays the key minutes. He's a guy that stays on the floor. He can play with fouls, and with this young backcourt, and only Nolan Hickman backing Nemhard. Uh, up at the point guard spot, Nemi's going to have to be on the floor for a lot of minutes, and I think he's going to. When it comes to spots that I want to attack, and I think you guys should be attacking on Gonzaga, I got two spots. I'm looking on November 22nd versus Central Michigan. I'm looking for a team total no more than 47 and a half because I think that Gonzaga is going to score 100 plus in that game. This is a Central Michigan team that has a lot of turnover and probably is going to be a little suspect on defense. The other game that I'm looking at is going to be a premier game. It's going to be a national televised game. It's going to be a game that you can rock out with your you-know-what out. And I'm telling you this, when Gonzaga goes up against Alabama, 
on December 4th. I got Gonzaga as a seven and a half point favorite. I got the total lined at 159. I'm taking Gonzaga. I'm taking that game over. So look out for Gonzaga. They're rocking out with Shet Holmgren. I think that this is a team that has Final Four written all over. And if you're looking to get on a future and you can bet WCC, get yourself on Gonzaga, even though it's juiced as fuck. When I think about a cupcake, sometimes I think about a cupcake called the French Butter Cream. Take a minute and think about what that thing tastes like, what it looks like, and I'll tell you. When I think about that cupcake, I think about Oregon Duck basketball. Dana Altman in Eugene, Oregon has reloaded with a world-class transfer load. And this guy, listen, all he's done is win and build this program up. They made the Sweet 16 last year. They definitely are getting overshadowed this year by what UCLA was able to do in the tournament. And I'm telling you this, do not count those ducks out because they are rocking out with their quacks out. All right. Nobody's shooting them out of the air. They're flying South. They're flying North and they're eating a whole bunch of people's food. I'll tell you this. This is an Oregon team that I think is going to be blistering hot this year. They're reloaded. They're ready to go. They're ready to make a run. And they got skills and mismatches all over this lineup. They have good front court size, which is something that's been lacking the last couple of years. And they can play a more traditional lineup, which is going to benefit them in the end against the Pac-12 competition. This is a team that if they can stay healthy, they're going to continue this trapping full court pressure defense. And listen, the key to this defense is having a capable shot blocker and having Fonte back uh, is going to be key. He missed a ton of action last year. This year, they do have a couple other guys that are top hundred center recruits that could make an impact. And I think that when you look at this Oregon offense, you know, it starts with some good defense, getting out in transition, letting your athletes do what they do best, which is get to the rim and make really nice top 10 ESPN plays. So um, on offense, you know, it's the same old deal. This really doesn't change on a year to year basis. Oregon's got to hit threes. They got to limit turnovers. They got to beat teams with, with good spacing, good cutting and good off ball movement. If they can do this with this new offense, I definitely think that they're going to provide the same kind of betting value that they provide last year, full game overs, team total overs. When we're talking in the 70 to 74 and a half point range. And of course, course um the spread so uh ways to attack this oregon team for me this year are going to be first half overs full game overs and then the team total overs uh, a player to watch is another player from my great country of canada you're welcome we're contributing to the d1 basketball landscape even more every year and quincy Greer is coming over from syracuse and he fits this dana altman uh, trapping full court pressure system perfectly. He's athletic. He can shoot. He can pass. He can hit an outside shot. He can rebound. And you know what? He has a whole ton of room to develop even further. And I think we're going to see that this year. This is a dude that I'm very high on. I think that he does a, a bit of everything. And he's going to fit really well into the scheme that Oregon's running out there. As you can see on the screen, I'm projecting that he averages 14.2 points per game and 9.2 rebounds, which is definitely a little step up from what he did at Syracuse. But it's a low, it's a low bar. I think that he can go way above that. So a game that I'm really looking to attack when it comes to Oregon is going to be on December 1st against a team that I love and I want to be betting on. But in this game, I will not be looking to bet on them. It was, it's a game against UC Riverside. I'm lining this game at 140 for the over-under. And if I see something in that range, you and I are both going to be jumping on the over. I'll tell you that. And listen, if I see a team total that's 73 and a half or under... I'm going to be jumping that also. So be on the lookout for Oregon, UC Riverside on December 1st. And in general, be on the lookout for Ducks. You know, you never know when they're going to fly into your windshield. 
or they're going to cash you a big ticket or be the last leg of a parlay. Let's go, Oregon. Quack, quack, quack. My favorite one yet. Thought I might even get a little Menchie in there. <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking about it. I was 